thank you for joining me. In this video, I want to talk about an approach to performing calculations with gas law variables. Now, when there are changes in one of the variables, I always start with the combined gas law. We're just going to start with that equation every time, and we will then cross off things that are controlled, and that will then lead us to the final formula that we need. I think it helps us avoid memorizing individual formulas too much. Um, so this is what we're going to start with, and I'm going to use what I call the guess method. Now, don't forget in problems like this that standard pressure and temperature, that S T P means that my temperature is 273, maybe 273.15 Kelvin, and pressure is any equivalent, mathematical equivalent of one atmosphere. 760 torr, um, 101.33 kilopascals, and so forth. So let's take a look. Let's dive into one of these. Here's an example. Um, I have listed out my guess chart here. So guess G is list your givens. We always want to check our units, write your equation, substitute, and solve. Plug and chug is another way to say substitute and solve. And then we will go ahead and mention that law name that we end up with. So we're going to list our givens here. We have a volume equal to 7.81 liters. A pressure at that volume is 754 torr. Now, my next line says, what would be the volume? So now I know I'm having a change. So I want to label those variables. When my pressure is changed to 1.23 atmospheres. So I have listed my given. The question explicitly says temperature and amount or moles are held constant. If it doesn't explicitly say, you have to assume uh, that they were held constant since they don't tell you about the changes. So now we want to check our givens. Uh, it doesn't specify, well it does, it says we have to have our volume in liters. Volume is in liters now, so our volume units are great. Check those units, they're fine. Now our pressure units have to be the same on both sides of the equation. So we either have to convert at, you know, the tor to atmospheres, or we have to convert the atmospheres to tor. Either one, not both, either one. I'm choosing to convert that 754 tor to atmospheres. So I want to eliminate tor. I want atmosphere. One atmosphere is 760 tor. Your teacher may or may not ask you to memorize that. And so if I uh, take, do that math, and I'm going to keep everything at three significant figures. When in doubt, put down three sig figs. Whoops, I put a two there, and that should be, I put a three there, and that should be a two. I said the word three for sig figs and got that stuck in my mind. Okay, so this is 0.992 atmospheres. Now, since I've checked my units, I don't have to worry about writing them down when I do my math. So, like I said, we've got P1V1 over T1N1 is equal to P2V2 over T2N2. Now, all I have to do in this equation is I cross off what doesn't change. Temperature doesn't change. It would cancel on both sides of the equation. Moles don't change. It would cancel on both sides of the equation. So I end up with P1V1 is equal to P2V2. And Boyle is very pretty, so I know that is Boyle's law. Okay. Now I can substitute and solve, or plug and chug. Okay. So I've got 7.81 times point. 992, remember I changed my P1, is equal to my new volume times 1.23. And if I did my math right, 
always double check me. Anybody can do a finger slip. I have 6.30 liters as my final answer. Now, I encourage you before you, um, you know, walk away from this problem, so to speak, is think about it logically. So let's look at what happened. We went from 0.992, remember that's P1, we went from 0.992 to 1.23. So our pressure increased, we would expect our volume to decrease, and it did. It decreased from 7.81 liters to 6.30 liters. It's a good way to check that maybe you did your math correctly there. All right. Let's do one more just to make sure you have a good handle on this for class. All right, now in this next one, let's list our givens. So I usually don't label the volume until I know that the problem tells me it changes. So I want to list it as I read. I have a volume of 5.2 liters. It's heated from, so my temperature went from 25.0 degrees Celsius. Now I know I had a change. So, okay, that's V1, T1. I know that's T2. It's 100 degrees Celsius. And it asks me what is my new volume at my higher temperature. So let's just think logically about it. We've got our givens. We have an increase in temperature. We expect to see an increase in volume. In other words, V2 should end up being greater than V1. Check our units. It says what is its volume in liters if the question doesn't tell you, in my opinion, any reasonable volume unit would be fair game. I personally wouldn't accept ounces or gallons. Um, but any reasonable metric unit, I would personally accept. So my volume is okay. Temperature is not. Now, if you had a multiple choice question, if I were to write a multiple choice question, one of my distractors or wrong answers would be what you would calculate if you forgot to change your temperature to Kelvin. So we need to change our temperatures to Kelvin. So T1 is 25.0. Uh, you must listen to your teacher or your professor uh, about how to convert and whether to carry the 0.15. Um, I will often do that, and then I want to round to the correct sig figs. So this is 298.2 Kelvin. And then the next one, T2 is going to be 100 degrees Celsius plus 273. And so that's going to give me 373 Kelvin. All right, now let's go ahead and write our equation. P1, V1 over T1, N1. This might be more work than you need. So I'm doing, I, I typically will do the long way, and then you're the one who has to work out with your teacher or professor how much work has to be shown in order to earn credit. Uh, I require work to be shown or no credit is awarded, even if it's the right answer. So then what I want to do is I want to cancel out what was held constant. The question fortunately makes it very clear that pressure and moles are held constant. So those will cancel in the equation. And I'm left with V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And that is Charles's law. Okay, and now we can, remember we've got givens, unknowns, equations, substitute, solve. And so I'm going to have 5.20 over 298.2 is equal to V2 over 273. And V2 
assuming my math was right, is 6.50 liters. Okay. Now, it, is V2 bigger than V1? Yeah, it is. And that's what we predicted would happen. And so we're likely in very good shape with this question. All right, thanks for joining me. Really appreciate your time. For my kiddos, this is your best chemistry teacher signing off.